Hi, my name is Holly and welcome to my channel, Holly Go Read. Alrighty, in today's video, we are going to be talking about the books I read in the month of November. Um, so I have th four DNFs, two returns, and I successfully read uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I successfully read eight books. Uh, four of those I already talked about in my Gilmore Girls um, Readathon wrap up video, which I will link up in the cards um, if you want to go there. If you want more information or want to watch my vlog and see my cute puppers, um, you can jump over there. Alrighty, so I started off the month with a womp, womp, womp. Um, had two DNFs right off the bat. Um, so the first one was Winging It by Emma Isaacs. Um, not to say this wasn't a good book. So this was a self-help book that was geared towards telling women that, you know, we can be a little too passive. We can try to over plan sometimes. Sometimes you just need to wing it and just go for the thing that you want. What I didn't realize was this book was mainly geared toward a entrepreneurial mindset, um, which isn't really what I was vibing with. Not to say that I don't have some side hustle um, games in mind, but it just wasn't what I was in the mood for, so I may come back to it, but for now, I guess technically, it's a DNF, maybe return, put down, I don't know what you wanna call it, but I didn't finish it. Um, I also put down Dear Girls by Ali Wong. Um, I have, and this is self-diagnosed, so I can't say that I actually have it, but I genuinely believe I have tocophobia, which is a fear of pregnancy and childbirth. Um, and this isn't just like, oh, that sounds scary. Like, no, I, I feel physically ill thinking about it for myself, for other people. If that's what you want, that's beautiful, that's amazing, that's glorious. Blessings unto you. But I feel sick about the thought of myself being pregnant, which really sucks because I really want to be a mom. Um, but that's not what we're talking about here. Dear Girls, I didn't realize, was kind of like geared to her daughters. And she tells these stories and they're very graphic about uh, her pregnancy and her childbirth experience, including her husband like peeking over the curtain during her C-section and like seeing her intestines. And I, 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 I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Um, so I had to put that book away, um, which is a shame because some of it was really funny. Um, and I like comedy memoirs, but uh, mm, nope, nope, nope. Mm -mm. Um, so I jumped over to The Truth Hurts by Rebecca Reed. This one, okay, so it was marketed as like a psychological thriller. I don't know, so I read through some of the reviews and I don't really know if I would call it a psychological thriller. It really felt more like a really twisted romance. So we have our two main characters, Poppy and Drew. Um, Poppy has just been fired from being a nanny and Drew is like this really like, I don't know if he's a millionaire or a billionaire, but he wealthy, he real, real wealthy. And she's just been fired from her family in, that she works for and she's in Ibiza and has no way to get home because they're English. Um, and yeah, it's really strange and he just kind of like starts to be her Prince Charming and they just like shack up in Ibiza for a while. Um, and then they get home, or no, they get married there in Ibiza. They make this deal. Okay, so this 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 is part of the blurb, this is, part, this is not spoilers yet. They make this deal when they get married. We don't talk about the past, ever. Now he kind of plays that off as like, oh, you know, we just don't need to know. We're adults, you know, we don't need to talk about every past breakup and all this crap. But like, they don't talk about their parents or high school or anything, nothing to do with the past. Um, and you just have this notion the whole time that something is really suspicious here. Um, at first I really just thought it was the husband that was suspicious and then, as you're reading, you're getting this per other perspective that's further in the past. And it was Poppy when she was a nanny before this family that she just got fired from. 
and you can tell, so it's from the perspective of the mom of that family, and you can just tell something's not right. Poppy's like too attached to this family. The mom keeps thinking like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have hired someone who's so pretty because my husband and meh, and you're kind of like wondering what's going on there. And then there's this whole weird thing with like the house that they buy out in the country and like the water turns itself on and doors are shutting and things are breaking. Did I accidentally jump into a supernatural book and not really understand? Um, just lots and lots and lots of what the hell is going on. Um, so no spoilers, but the ending just didn't really do it for me. Um, it was very sudden and just, I don't really feel like we ever got a good amount of payoff for the amount of what the hell is going on with Drew and with Poppy. It was like, what is, I don't know. Um, I ended up giving it a, it, it, it's about a three and a half. Um, it was definitely engaging. Like, I really wanted to know what's going on. I was reading it during the election. Um, so it was a nice distraction at the very least. Um, but it was rushed and it left me wanting. Um, so it just didn't ultimately, like, click for me. Um, it might be to your taste. I'm not saying it's a bad book. I'm just saying it didn't deliver what I was hoping for. After that, I tried to pick up Stuck on You by Portia McIntosh. Another DNF. Um, so this is, and I think I've finally learned my lesson. Um, I don't trust the blurbs of British rom-coms. So this was marketed as there's this girl, it works in an office and she desk shares with someone. I don't even remember her name. She desk shares with somebody and basically they're leaving each other post-it notes and that's how they like fall in love. That's what the blurb says. But really, there's this other thing going on with like her boss who's like this weird playboy who doesn't trust women and like anytime he gets close to one he breaks up with them. He's this photographer. There's this whole weird subplot with like he wants to photograph this guy who's like supposedly a serial killer but they've never been able to prove it. He's like killed three of his wives or some crap like that. I don't know. I didn't get it. Apparently if I would have kept reading, kept on reading this guy has like a redemption arc, but I just didn't like him. I think the, uh, ugh, I don't like the playboy turn good, but no. It's not, it's not my trope. I didn't enjoy it, so I put it down. And I don't think I'm gonna be going back, honestly. And I feel like something is wrong with British publishing houses, honestly, that they don't put accurate blurbs with the books. And because this is the third time I've been bitten by that and it's always been British rom-coms. So has anybody else had that experience? Cause it's super annoying uh, for me. Cause I like to know what I'm in for unless it's a thriller. And then I don't want to know what I'm in for. Um, anyway, then I jumped over to the other Bennett sister by Janice Hadlow. So this one is essentially Pride and Prejudice plus. So like in the events before, during and after Pride and Prejudice from the point of view of Mary Bennett, um, who is the ugly duckling um, kind of sister of the bunch. <laughs> the socially awkward, ugly duckling of the bunch. And bless Mary. Okay, so what I will say up front, this book is heckin' long, heckin' chunky. Um, I didn't have a physical copy of it, but I had the 18 hour long audio book <laughs> and I had to go and get an actual like fit, uh, Kindle copy from the library because I needed to listen at three times speed because well, the book is good and brings up a lot of like philosophical like are we what makes ourselves happy? You know, do we intrinsically have that capability or, you know, do you have to be born beautiful and rich or do you have to be at least born beautiful so that you can become rich um, in order to be happy? So there's some interesting like philosophical things going on there, but you spend a lot of time in Mary's head and Mary is like, she is sad bitch. I mean, I don't mean like she's a bitch, but good Lord, that is some sad energy. Um, she 
is very depressed and very socially anxious and living in her head that much is kind of overwhelming honestly particularly for someone who does have social anxiety it was like okay yeah i feel it i feel it okay 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 um you know you just kind of in her head a lot and you see that she's she doesn't mean to be as awkward as she is like when she's trying to say something she's trying to be helpful or trying to be clever and it just kind of falls flat with her family or nobody really cares um so that's kind of sad and then you know she's trying to grow and become you know a better person and you know just nobody really cares about her you know and she doesn't really feel like she deserves good things to happen to her um she's constantly reminded that she's less than because she's not the prettiest girl in the room um so that's kind of hard to like read through and it being so much of it but at the end of the day i did really kind of enjoy it that you know they gave this character who i always felt like deserved more deserved better you know a more rounded sense and i mean good things happen to her i mean it this is a romance book good things happen um Mary gets her own love triangle. And what I think is most impressive about that is it's a very Austin love triangle. Austinian love triangles are a very specific thing unto themselves. Um, they have a very particular sequence. So if you take the two suitors that Elizabeth Bennet has, so you have Darcy and you have Wickham. So Darcy is kind of cold and aloof, but at the end of the day, he's the better person. Where you have Wickham, who is charming and jovial, and everybody really likes him. But at the end of the day, he's a jerk. He's a bad person. And so you have that choice, and it's not usually um, two guys fighting over a girl. It's like the girl sees this guy, she's like, mm yes or no it kind of goes back and forth but she sees the other guy and she's like "Ooh, yes that might work that could happen but then realizes that he's an idiot he's a jerk and goes back to the right one another great example in sense and sensibility you have captain or colonel brandon and willoughby willoughby charming jerk colonel brandon sweet angel um, I love Colonel Brandon. He is my squish. Um, I love him. Think very highly of him. I esteem him. <laughs> um, Ellen Rickman as Colonel Brandon is just like, I'll insert a picture because I love his face. <laughs> I just love him. Um, <laughs> I love that adaptation in particular. Oh, uh, it's so good. But anyway, I, I digress. Um, so I feel like Janice Hadlow really did a good job of incorporating some Austinian tropes and themes without trying to mimic her style, which I feel like is good in a retelling, reimagining kind of format. So it takes those familiar characters and familiar styles, but keeps some things that are familiar. Although I will say she does get you to kind of re-examine some of the characters that you think you know. So obviously Caroline Bingley is a bitch. I don't think anybody's gonna have a problem with me saying that Caroline Bingley is a bitch. But I, I always had some sympathy for Charlotte Lucas. And after this, ah, for the version of her that exists in the other Bennett sister, she is, she is not particularly nice. And I had no more sympathies left for Charlotte Lucas. Um, Mr. Collins, though, becomes a very, I will say, sympathetic figure. Um, in this book, I feel like Hadlow is a lot more sympathetic towards Collins, for sure. And I think the new characters that she introduced, um, she definitely fleshed out the gardeners a lot more. I think that was a really fun, familial aspect that really gave Mary a chance to grow into her own. The new characters that are introduced to be sort of her love interests were beautiful, excellent, um, and I, and of course I loved the ending. Um, so I definitely would recommend this one. I gave it a four as far as my spicy scale, which if you don't know what that is, I will link up in the cards how I rate my books. I have a special spice rating. Um, this was definitely a one flame. This is 
historically accurate. You're not gonna get lots of stolen kisses. Definitely nothing more than stolen kisses if you've read some like Regency um, era Harlequins. This is not that. Um, we're talking very classical, chaste romances, some hand touchings, some longing glances, but, but nothing more. <laughs> It's definitely a one flame. Then I read No Judgments by Meg Cabot. Um, I rated this a two and a half star. Ooh, it was, it was, it was okay. Um, ooh. Okay, so for this one, we do have some trigger warnings for sexual assault and for animal violence. Um, if that's not something that you're comfortable with listening to, I'll go ahead and um, say skip till you see the next book cover um, because we're gonna talk about that for a second. So, in this book, we have Brie and Drew. Well, another Drew. Okay, anyway. Um, so, Brie has sort of escaped this little tiny island in the Florida Keys. Drew is the uh, nephew of her boss. There's a hurricane coming. And... Brie basically takes it upon herself to take care of the island's animals who were left behind um, in the path of the storm because everyone was told to evacuate. And you know she has a secret because her parents, or her mom keeps calling and um, is basically saying like, you're overreacting, you just need to come home. Her boyfriend's doing the same, her, her ex-boyfriend is doing the same, being like, hey, you're overreacting, just come home. Um, and she doesn't. And you know it's something big. And I guessed this from pretty early on um, because they kept you know saying like, oh, he didn't mean it, he was drunk. Uh, okay, so again, this is big spoilers because I feel like these triggers deserve to be discussed. Um, our main character, Brie, was sexually assaulted by her boyfriend's best friend. The boyfriend basically takes the friend's side and is like, you know, he was drunk, he didn't mean it, you know him, you know, he just needs to go to rehab again. Um, and her mom also kind of takes his side of basically being like, you're overreacting, you should just get over it, nothing bad happened. Because he just laid naked on top of her while she was sleeping and she woke up to have him there and he continued to try to advance on her. That it, it wasn't rape, so it's not that bad. The fuck? What? Um, yeah. So I did not enjoy that at all. I also didn't enjoy her abuse, <laughs> the guy who did this to her coming to this island in the middle of this evacuation process and being like, oh, you know, you need to forgive me because I'm in the 12 step program. Um, yeah, no, it, it was all super manipulative and I didn't like it at all. Um, and then the animal abuse. So there's this guy who is just the town drunk and he kicks his dog a lot and people have done nothing about it. Um, like everybody knows this dude kicks his dog. Um, we don't truck with animal abusers. And I mean, to be fair, neither did our hero, Drew, you know, clocked the guy for doing it. So at least Drew's got that going for him. Um, but that's about it, because the chemistry was um, Yeah, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't that good. Um, and then, okay, so maybe some people don't view this as animal abuse, but as somebody who grew up in a state where hurricanes happen just about every year, okay, I'm a Texas girl, hurricanes happen every year, and you know they're coming. And if you live in the Florida Keys, Hurricanes are not not a joke. So this whole thing with this little tiny island, basically everyone left their pets behind. Everyone. And we're talking, yeah, I left my birds up in the attic in case it, you know, flooded. You left your birds, who are temperature sensitive creatures, in an attic during a hurricane, knowing that the power is likely to go out what? And then people who left like their cats and their dog, like, what? Okay, I understand that you cannot always evacuate with your animals. 
In dire situations, many shelters do not accept animals. I understand this. But they're acting like every single person on this island at, thought it was no big deal to leave their dogs, their cats, their birds, their pigs, whatever behind. And we're just like, oh, I'll be back in a couple of days, honey bunny, stay here. No! Ah! Uh -uh. Yeah, no, I had, and it's clear that Meg Cabot had never been a part of a hurricane or hurricane preparedness or hurricane aftermath. Like everything about this was wrong from a hurricane standpoint. Yeah, bitch, you don't sleep through hurricanes, especially if you're in the eye of a hurricane. <sighs> Yeah, so it, it was kind of a trash book, honestly. Like, the romance was okay, like, sure. It was like, like I said, it's a three on my spice scale because there is on-page sexy times. Um, like, really boring on-page sexy times, but sure, it was there. Um, yeah, I don't recommend this book, honestly, and it'll probably be my last Meg Cabot adult romance. I didn't enjoy her style of writing, and this one just, frankly, kind of pissed me off. Already next up I had uh, Meet Cute by Helena Hunting. I ended up returning it without even cracking the cover because I had so many holds coming from the library um, that I kind of just kicked that one out. Um, I may pick it up again, although I read some reviews that were not particularly favorable, um, so I might not pick it back up. Um, All the Acorns on the Forest Floor by Kim Hooper. Uh, that was another audiobook I picked up after being so freaked out by Dear Girls, I couldn't handle anything else that dealt with pregnancy, so I had to scooch that one off the list. Um, the next one I picked up, um, the next four I picked up were from my Gilmore Girls Readathon. Um, and that was the Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Um, the Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgan Thaler. It Happened One Autumn by Lisa Kleepass. And If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. Um, again, that's gonna be linked up in the cards here um, if you want my reviews on those. The only one of those that I would like strongly recommend, particularly if you like historical romances, was It Happened One Autumn by Lisa Kleepass. This book was fun. I mean, was it a little trashy? Yes. Was it a little unplausible? Yes. Um, was it a heckin' good time? Absolutely. Because we have one of my favorite tropes, which is the dollar princess with English aristocracy. God bless. I love the, the idea of like the American kind of influence in the British aristocracy because we just like fly all over their morals and whatnot and their society standards and it's just, it's so much fun. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. You can go watch the rest of my thoughts um, in the other video, but I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like a four, four and a half. Um, and I think it was like a four on the spice scale too. It was. There was some spice. I was not wondering, where is the spice? No, no, the spice was there. It was there. Then I read The Bromance Book Club by Lisa, is it Lisa or Lissa K. Adams? Ooh, I'm gonna say Lissa K. Adams. Um, I really liked that one as well. I gave it a four out of pure enjoyment, and then it was also a four on my spice scale. So. I even went to thrift books and bought me a paperback of it because I enjoyed it that much. Does it have a lot of cliches? Yes. Um, it's a second chance romance, um, which I know isn't everybody's deal, but we do have Gavin and his wife, Thea, um, and he's a baseball star, and basically he's messed up their relationship by ignoring her. Um, which that happens. I mean, I'm married, you know, you have to constantly work at your relationship. So I find that very relatable. And so basically he is brought in to this group of friends that have a group of husbands and partners who have created this book club um, to essentially read romance novels and use them as templates to help their relationships. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was a fun time. I ate this book up. I devoured it, I think, in like two sittings. I really enjoyed it. And the sexy scenes were great. They were fun. Um, 
but it also still felt very, you know, organic and the family life was really cute. Um, I enjoyed it. I did. Again, there were, you know, it was a little heavy handed at times, like, you know, romance books are about feminism. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they're just about having fun, y'all. They don't always have to have a point about, like, screw the patriarchy. Um, which, I mean, some of them are. Don't get me wrong. Some of them are about screw the patriarchy and God bless them. <laughs> I never do this, but I actually ran out of time. Um, my camera only films in 30-minute increments. Um, so I've been talking for a really long time. Um, <laughs> whoops. I thought I could make it. I was so close. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, if you want a if you want a fun good time that doesn't bash romance books and makes men consider that romance is a real thing and that romance books are an actual genre that deserve some attention, um read it. Give it a chance. I know it's been all over BookTube and God bless it cuz it was fun. I actually also picked up the sequel. It just arrived in the mail from Thrift Books as well. The last book I attempted uh was Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. So I read his introduction where he basically says that he wanted to write a Alice in Wonderland, um, Chronicles of Narnia for an adult market. Basically the thought that like you can fall through the cracks of the world into something else and use that as a way to dialogue about real issues. I think he accomplished that. He set, he, he accomplished his goal for sure. It was just a little too weird for me. Um, it was a big cast of characters and um, I just never really clicked for me, which is a shame because, oh my gosh, is Neil Gaiman a great narrator. I had the Kindle copy in front of me and I had Neil Gaiman reading his own work in my head it was a really great reading experience. I just wasn't enjoying the content. And that really hurts my feelings because the narration was so good. Like who knew he could do that many voices? Um, again, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I really enjoy a good narrator and Neil Gaiman is certainly a good narrator. Um, <laughs> I just, I wasn't clicking with the book and I, I did this thing and I know I shouldn't do the thing, but I've been doing this since I was like a little middle schooler. Um, I will go f out and find the way the book ends. It's very easy to do, particularly with a book as well known as Neverwhere. So I read through a synopsis of what happens in the rest of the book that I didn't read because I did read about 60% of it. Um, and I didn't like it. I, I won't say what it is because, I mean, spoilers, but the payoff wasn't going to be big enough for me, so I let it go. <laughs> ah, so there it is. I read eight books. I talked about 14 in my TBR, so just barely over half of what I intended to read. Um, so didn't do too great there. I definitely, um, was aware that it was an overly ambitious TBR. Um, and I'm off to a banging start this month. So anyway, those are the books that I read in the month of November. I will link my December TBR up in the cards as well. If you want to give that a see what I'm going to be attempting to reading what I'm going to attempt to read here in the month of December. Um, but if you watch my TBR and you watch my wrap up, you will see that what I intend to read and what I actually read end up being kind of different things, honestly. Um, I am a hardcore mood reader. I don't know if you are afflicted as such as I am. Um, if you are, let me know, cause <laughs> how do you fight that? Cause like sometimes I will request something and I'm in the mood, I wanna read it and then I get around to it and I'm like, mm, I don't wanna read that anymore. So yeah, anyway, this is going to be a heckin' long video. Um, Sorry about that, I ramble a lot. If you've stuck in this long, Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. 
Um, if you liked it, go ahead and click the the link and the, the, the like and the subscribe and all that fun stuff because um, I'm going to keep making more videos for a while. See how this goes. Um, anywho, I think that's all today. Thanks, y'all.